So I want to talk about Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar, the main event of Great Balls of Fire. Now, last night on Monday Night Raw, they shot a very interesting angle with Paul Heyman getting choked out by Samoa Joe. And I thought it was really well done because they were able to really, really show everyone that Samoa Joe's not playing around, that he's not afraid to beat up the advocate, that he's not afraid of Brock Lesnar. And this is something that I think is very refreshing. It worked with Goldberg. It kind of worked with Roman Reigns a couple years ago for at least part of that buildup. And I think it's going to work with Samoa Joe. The thing about Samoa Joe is that he has credibility from the hardcore fans. Samoa Joe has pretty much been an independent wrestling darling. He's been loved by the hardcore fans since the late 90s, early 2000s. He really established himself in the early 2000s. Uh, specifically, like, really solidly in Ring of Honor. That's where he really blew up. He had a three-match series with CM Punk in 2004, and those matches were considered absolute classics. Plus, he had the Ring of Honor belt for, like, I think it was, like, two years. He had it, what, from 03 to end of 04, so it was almost two years. It was, like, a year and, like, nine months. Well... After that, of course, he had his TNA run with these really good... He had a really good series of matches in TNA with AJ Styles, Chris Daniels, also Kurt Angle. You know, he really worked hard. Then he went to NXT, and pretty much when he got there, everybody knew who he was because he had this awesome reputation of being this great wrestler and this legitimate, big, tough badass. The beautiful thing about it is that Samoa Joe has been pretty well protected in every company he's worked in. Like in Ring of Honor, TNA, and WWE, and NXT, if you want to count that separately, they've never really, like, done any kind of really bad, you know, booking. They haven't really, you know, buried him. He's always been promoted as a pretty decent star and now he's getting a monster push against Brock Lesnar now I do have some concerns here what we had heard you know a few months ago is that the plan was that Braun Strowman was going to wrestle Brock Lesnar right around the summertime and then we later got confirmation in the dirt sheets the newsletters um I'm just using that name as a joke the newsletters and the the online websites that Brock was booked to wrestle Braun Strowman at SummerSlam. Like, that was the WWE's plan for several months. That's why they had Strowman beat Roman in April, because they had to give him a legitimate win. Then, of course, Strowman got hurt, and, you know, plans may have changed. Now, I don't know for sure if plans have changed, because from last time I checked, Strowman was supposed to come back before SummerSlam, so he was going to be ready for that match. But... What we had previously heard was that Lesnar was going to wrestle at the July pay-per-view, the Great Balls of Fire show, and that it was going to be a one-and-done match. And so, I guess because Samoa Joe is the number one contender, this is going to be a one-and-done. Now, my thing is that, you know, Brock has to be booked strong because Brock has always been booked strong. You know, he's Brock Lesnar. He goes out there and he kills people. He killed Randy Orton. Um, he didn't really kill Goldberg. They had a pretty good little four-minute match at WrestleMania. But, you know, you've seen him. He killed John Cena. You know, that's what he does. He's a big monster who runs through guys. Samoa Joe's kind of the same. Samoa Joe had an undefeated streak in TNA, which really helped establish him. So these guys are, you know, similar in that aspect. The one thing I'm concerned about is that if this match is going to be a one-and-done, I think that the problem is that Samoa Joe, even though he's not the youngest guy on the roster... He's also not a guy who you want to kill right now. The dude just debuted in January. He has been wanting this opportunity to be with this company for many, many years. He now has the opportunity. And I personally feel like having Brock Lesnar come out there and just kill this guy. They have to make Brock Lesnar look strong so that he looks good against Braun Strowman. But they also, I don't think, should be killing off Samoa Joe. Like, I don't think that Brock Lesnar should squash this guy. I think if they're going to have a match, have it be ultra competitive. And if Brock is going to win the match, I want Brock to win by the skin of his teeth. If you're going to have Samoa Joe lose this match, I don't think it should be at the other guys. I think Joe should hang in there because the idea, the psychology behind it should be that even if Samoa Joe goes down, he's going to go down fighting. He's going to go down and, like, take a piece of Brock with him, which is what, you know, Paul Heyman said in his promo. So I feel like they're already building up to that. The worst thing they can do is kill this guy and have Brock kill him and squash him because Samoa Joe's only been on TV for about six months now. He's fresh. He's only lost, I think, one, maybe two matches. He lost the one match to Seth Rollins, the pay-per-view. I don't know if he lost anything else. I forgot. But he's pretty much been very, very fresh since coming in. He's a new guy on the roster. He's very, very talented. One of the best wrestlers, I would say, of this era. 
And he has an aura about him that a lot of other wrestlers don't have. He has that tough guy, I can kick your ass anytime I want to, martial arts mentality, or not mentality, but aura. And Brock has something similar because Brock went into the UFC, you know, and fought real dudes. He's also technically a martial artist. Even though he's a wrestler, it's still a mixed martial artist. It still counts, if you ask me. And it's not, I do find it kind of funny that a year ago, literally one year ago in July, Brock went back to the UFC to have a fight with Mark Hunt, another big, tough, Samoan-type guy. So that is very interesting they're doing that again this year. Even though Mark Hunt is promoted as being from New Zealand, he is a Samoan. I mean, that's what he is. He's of Samoan descent. Samoa Joe is from California. I mean, he wasn't born on the island of Samoa. At least I don't believe he was. But he's still a Samoan, so that's kind of interesting. Now, that's what I'm trying to say here with this video is that I don't think Joe should be killed. But I also don't think that Joe should look too dominating on Brock Lesnar. I think the idea should be that Lesnar do something like with Goldberg where Lesnar hits some suplexes and then Joe, because he also, in fact, if you remember, if you're a longtime wrestling fan, you know this. One of Samoa Joe's finishing moves is called the Chimeraplex. Now, the Chimeraplex, he hasn't really used it too much in the WWE, but back in the day, it was basically three different variations on German suplexes. So I think it would be very interesting and a good story if Joe were to take Lesnar to Suplex City for at least a part of this match. I'm not saying that he has to dominate, don't think that, but I actually want to have a fairly competitive match. If Brock's going to win, I think it should be with the F5, maybe with the um maybe with the Kimura, bring that back, you know, or maybe multiple F5s, it shouldn't be just one. And I think if he's going to win that way, it's fine. I keep thinking they're going to end it with a fuck finish. I keep thinking that Strowman's going to run in for the DQ and they're going to build up a Strowman Lesnar match, but they haven't really built up too much of the Strowman comeback. Plus, they haven't really finished the Strowman Roman Reigns feud. That's still going on. So, you know, it's not still going on, but it's on hold until Strowman comes back. So that's also unfinished business. I actually think that Roman and Strowman are going to keep feuding until probably the Royal Rumble. I think it's going to keep going even even to that. I really believe it's going to be that long. But if they're going to stick with this plan of having Strowman and Brock wrestle at SummerSlam, I mean, I'm not a big fan of run-in DQs. I don't like these at all. But if the idea is they're going to come back and do Joe and Lesnar later on sometime next year, which I hope that they do do it, especially if Lesnar beats him, I think having Strowman come in, do the DQ, and then building to a SummerSlam match, and then later you do Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman, you could do that as well. I think that could work out. But if Brock beats him, I'm okay with it if he beats him clean. I don't think Joe's getting the belt. I, I don't see that. Brock's going to be holding on to that belt till WrestleMania. The plan is to have Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans. That's the plan right now. That may have changed again. I don't think it has, though. I think they really want to have that match again and probably have Roman win this time. So I know Roman haters out there aren't going to like that. If you don't like Roman Reigns, get ready for a fourth coronation. But that's the plan right now. I just want the match to be good. I do want to say, though, that you know the Samoa Joe Lesnar match, I'm hyped for it. I really am. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Even if Lesnar wins, like I said, I want Joe to look strong. But one thing that I found interesting about the angle they shot last night is that Samoa Joe really came off like the heel. And, you know, he has been booked as a villain since he came in. Brock's kind of been in the middle. Like, Brock hasn't really been a complete villainous heel. But he also hasn't been a baby face. He's just Brock. He's like an anomaly. In the feud with Goldberg... He was pretty much like the dickish heel for most of that feud, but when they told you the story about him conquering his demons and beating the guy who he's never been able to beat, that's kind of a good guy storyline. You know, that whole, you know, redemption storyline usually fits for a good guy. So I feel like with Brock, they're kind of threading that razor's edge as far as who or what he's going to actually be. So he can face both baby faces and heels and be all right. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more money in him as a baby face because he sells more merchandise and he's super over. So I think they're probably going to go focus with him going against heels. And I guess Roman Reigns is a heel in the eyes of many, right? So that'll definitely get him some baby face pops. But still, 
Um, it's interesting that they're going in that direction because Paul Heyman's supposed to be this kind of slimy, sleazy advocate, but yet we're supposed to feel sympathy for him because Samoa Joe choked him out. I like the angle still because I thought it made sense, but I wonder how the casual fans are going to react to it. Like, do they are they happy that Joe choked out Paul Heyman? Doesn't everybody like him when Paul Heyman gets beat up? Or is it one of those things where they feel bad because Joe's bullying him for no reason? You know, who knows? But, and let me know what you think in the comments. I want to see the match. These are my thoughts on it right now. I'm excited to see where they go. Lesnar will be on Raw next week. I'll look forward to seeing what they do with him there. We'll talk about it. Maybe I'll come back and talk about it then, but let me know your thoughts down below on the buildup, on the match. Are you hyped? I want to know if you're a Samoa Joe fan, and if you are, what's your favorite Samoa Joe match? I'll talk to you guys later.